good job. It's your boy Ross back again with another video. So we're going to check out most shocking WWE WrestleMania 38 rumors, spoilers, and returns. This should be a good one. We're going to see what uh, what potential spoilers and rumors are being swirled around for this year's WrestleMania. I think a lot of us are talking about the whole Cody Rhodes situation. That's the biggest rumor and potential spoiler that's going to happen. He may be Seth Rollins' opponent. We will see. Appreciate all the love and support. Road to ADK. Let's get right into this bad boy. Going on, guys. It is WrestleMania here. Back with another video. A WrestleMania 38 is fast approaching, and it's now time to dish the dirt. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at the last minute most shocking rumors you need to know about WrestleMania 38. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. First, let's start off with a bit of news as number one, a tag match has been added to WrestleMania. A fans hmm. wondering whether the New Day would compete at WrestleMania can breathe a sigh of relief as Sir Kofi Kingston and King Xavier Woods are booked up by Sheamus and Ridge Holland. Now you may recall rumors that all three members of the New Day would face Sheamus, Ridge Holland and their new ally Butch, but this changed after Big E was accidentally mm -hmm. injured by Holland during an episode of SmackDown. But now WWE.com has announced the two teams will battle during Night 1 of Mania. Number 2. More Celebrity Appearances A WWE.com has revealed more celebrity appearances for this year's Showcase of the Immortals. WrestleMania is known for its celebrity appearances and this year will be no different as Logan Paul steps mm. into the ring alongside The Miz to battle Rey and Dominic Mysterio no, okay, and Jackass okay, star Johnny Knoxville squares off against Sami Zayn. However, Logan Paul and Johnny Knoxville aren't the only celebrities heading to Mania as the WWE has taped two country music performers to open nights 1 and 2. Oh. According to WWE.com, as first announced by People, platinum album selling artist Brantley Gilbert and chart-topping singer and songwriter Jesse James Decker will perform America the Beautiful. Brantley Gilbert will perform just prior to WrestleMania Saturday and Jesse James Decker will perform in advance of WrestleMania Sunday. But that's not all, as you may have heard that celebrity DJ Valentino Khan will entertain the WWE Universe at the AT&T &T Stadium each night before the show begins. Of course, the WWE uh, yes. Universe will be watching Logan Paul and Johnny Knoxville closely, especially after Bad Bunny's incredible performance at WrestleMania 36. I'm going to just be honest with you. <laughs> Bad Bunny st stole the damn show, and I don't think anyone expected that. I don't see logan paul still in the show i could be wrong but i don't even care for this match you can be like why don't you care for this match because it's just it's i don't care man i don't know i just i just feel like those spots should be used by someone else that's just me personally a mid carter mid card champions i i just rather not i don't care for johnny knoxville and and logan paul that's just me personally Devon, and Mania switching to two nights permanently? Now, the story of WrestleMania permanently switching to two nights has been discussed and it appears that this year's show will be the true test of whether the WWE spreads its biggest show of the year over two nights I'm not or a big turns fan to running it. it on one night. While WrestleMania 38 does not look like it'll be a legitimate sellout, mm -hmm. Meltzer has discussed how a two-night event will likely be the WWE's most profitable mania in terms of ticket sales and merchandise sales. Mm -hmm. As short as something catastrophic, fans should expect WrestleMania to stay as a two-night spectacle as WWE President Nick Khan's plans suggest the WWE is looking to make every premium event, aka its traditional pay-per-views, into lavish affairs and spreading WrestleMania over two nights, much like New Japan's Wrestle Kingdom is just one part of his long-term plans for continuing the WWE's profitability and global market share. I get it. I'm just not a fan of the two-night format. I, I prefer WrestleMania be a four-hour event of only the best of the best feuds being on a show. But at the same time, I understand it gives the, you know the wrestlers the opportunity to be on that show to get paid potentially more. And you know it just brings them more money. So I get it. But if it's going to be two nights, it needs to be two nights of matches that I feel like are worth WrestleMania, not two nights of matches that most of these matches are damn near matches you can see on Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. They, they don't feel that important. There's only a handful of matches that feel WrestleMania important, and most of them don't. So. Well, that was a bit of news. What about the rumors? As number one, showdown or throwdown. 
Our fans continue to ask whether the Kevin Owens Show segment featuring Texas's own Stone Cold Steve Austin will feature the Texas Rattlesnake engaging in anything more than the War of Words followed by a stunner or something more. While it seems unlikely fans will see a one-on-one -on -one match, after all, if WWE knew Austin was going to wrestle, why wouldn't they hype it? As yeah. we reported earlier this year, the WWE moved heaven and earth to try and talk Stone Cold into returning for an actual match. But the current theory is that KO and Austin will get some sort of extended brawl. A Bleacher Reports Chris Rowling has an interesting theory that KO and Austin's clash on Saturday night could lead to them working a match the next night. While that shouldn't be ruled out, especially knowing Vince McMahon's love for hot shotting, mm. we have a feeling that Austin will use this exchange to see just how much he can go in the ring, and if he's happy, count on seeing Austin return to the ring for an actual match down the road. If he's unhappy with his performance, he can at least say he gave the fans in Texas one last moment of glory. I don't know about seeing him in the ring, you know, in a wrestling capacity, I think. I'm I'm all for when people say they're they're done and they feel like they're truly done, let them be done. Too many times we've seen where wrestlers say, yo, they're done and then they come back to get that one more match and it, it doesn't it doesn't hit. It doesn't go as what we expected, you know, because their body's not the same. Would I love to see Stone Cold out there whooping some ass, whooping some open them whooping the you know, I can't even say it. Yeah, I can't even say it. Wouldn't I love to see Stone Cold out there whooping, whooping ass, man? Of course. I would love to see that. But at the same time, I, I I also know that this is not the same guy that I grew up watching. Your body can only take so much of this punishment for, you know, for the many years he was wrestling. You know what I'm saying? So I know he's not going to be moving the same. I know he's not going to be looking the same out there. But at the same time, we can still have an enjoyable moment. And I think people would just enjoy Kevin Owens and Stone Cold in a segment together. I think that's that's fine enough for me personally. But what do you guys think? Do you guys would you guys want to see Stone Cold maybe wrestle one more time? Let me know how y'all feel. Number two, be fair to Flair, Ronda Rousey edition. Our fans are taking notice as Ronda Rousey takes on Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship. The question here isn't who will win the Charlotte Flair vs Ronda Rousey title bout, nor is it how good the match will be. Instead, fans should be asking how the WWE will let the narrative of the Queen claiming to be on a different level than Rousey, and whether this means Flair's comments will blow up in her face with a squash loss, or whether she'll show the baddest woman on the planet while she's quickly on track to beating Papa Flair's record world title reigns. This is clearly Rousey's biggest bout since returning to the WWE at this year's Rumble, and the WWE has to be careful with how it books the match. If Ronda runs rushed on Flair, what will it mean for the Queen's immediate future, as it's likely Ronda will have to lock on the title once she secures it around her waist, with some pundits believing Rousey and Lynch will spend the next year on an undefeated streak until they clash at WrestleMania 38. The WWE will probably work to squeeze at least two more rematches from Rousey and Flair, but mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to build any interest if Flair loses quickly. Expect to see Flair get some sort of advantage before their match, possibly with an injury angle that allows Flair to give Rousey a run for her money before Rowdy Ronda eventually wins the belt. Yeah, it's not going to be a squash match. It, if it was to be a squash match, then it would be literally a waste of everybody's time. I think they're going to actually have a drawn-out match. I think we're going to see Charlotte Flair do Charlotte Flair things, try to cheat to win, try to get some type of, of injury advantage on Ronda, but Ronda will ultimately win the title. That's just what it's going to be, and kind of what WrestleMania said. They'll probably draw out the match a little bit longer, get maybe two more matches out of it, and then she'll move on to somebody else. But I do not think she's squashing her. If she squashes Charlotte, as much as I don't care for Charlotte, that ruins everything. That ruins her character. She does not need to squash her. It needs to be a legitimate match. And, we'll, you know, they'll they'll keep building rematches after that. Because she gets squashed. She don't deserve a rematch. You're going to have to find someone else for her to face. So, Number three, main event musings. Now, one of the most amusing musings about WrestleMania is which match will main event night one. The current debate seems to be whether the Ronda Rousey vs. Charlotte Flair bout will end the night or whether the WWE will close things out with the Kevin Owens show segment. And what's amusing about this, at least to us, is that by all accounts, the WWE is still trying to figure out which match will air on which nights, other than Roman vs. Brock, let alone what the order will be. 
And knowing Mr. McMahon, don't be surprised to see matches appear in the oddest of places. WrestleMania 38 certainly wouldn't be the first showcase of the Immortals, where the WWE throws a main event out in its opening bout, whether it's yeah. Ronda taking on Charlotte or Bianca Belair challenging Becky Lynch. I can see that Number as well. Four, surprise appearances. While it's all but a given that Cody Rhodes mm -hmm. is returning to WrestleMania, it's unlikely we'll see any returns. However, fans can count on guest appearances by WWE legends, but just who remains to be seen. You may recall a recent story that the WWE had wanted to bring back the original members of the NWO back for a special appearance at Mania, but that is until the unfortunate passing of Scott Hall. While the WWE could bring back Hogan, Kevin Nash and Sean Waltman, and especially if they want to pay tribute to their fallen friend, there's always the WWE's policy of tending to stay away from mentioning too many deceased wrestlers, mm -hmm. which is why the WWE's Hall of Fame main class tends to avoid inducting more than one or two deceased wrestlers. The WWE likes to feature legends in backstage segments when they interact with today's stars, and now that COVID has slowed down, the WWE Universe should see these amusing interactions again. One area of interest is this year's Hall of Fame inductees. As us fans know, the WWE's honorees typically make an appearance before the fans at WrestleMania, but will the WWE do anything special to honor The Undertaker? One thing that fans can count on is that the WWE will have Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner on a 30 second delay if the WWE decides to give him a live microphone at any time during his induction ceremony or during Mania weekend. <laughs> Number 5. Returning Wrestlers other than you know who, don't yeah. expect to see any big returns at Mania, as that has traditionally been reserved for the Raws and Smackdowns after WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. While there are a slew of superstars from the women's roster who have been sitting on the sidelines, including Bailey, Asuka, and Lacey Evans, these returns will likely place after Mania. It's difficult to imagine the WWE finding time to squeeze them in into either Night 1 or Night 2 or wasting their returns at WrestleMania. Number 6. Turn Time or will WrestleMania 38 feature any turns, either babyface or heel turns? The two possibilities come to mind as Dominic Mysterio and Madcap Moss. While things seem to be going well with the Mysterios, other than their recent troubles with The Miz and Logan Paul, the WWE has been planting the seeds for Dominic to go off on his own, including repeated interviews where Papa Rea said he'll never fight his son in the ring, as well as various mm, spots yeah. where Dominic's inexperience and temper have led to losses for the father and son duo. Expect things to finally come to a boil at WrestleMania. Likewise, the WWE has been setting things up for a split between Happy Corbin and Matt Cam Moss. Moss has been making jokes at Corbin's expense, which makes it seem like fans can expect Moss to turn babyface. But then what? Yeah. Based on Moss's WWE career so far, this could be the big break he's been looking for, or his last gasp before being wish well on his future endeavors. Yeah. Number seven, <laughs> more matchy. I will say this. Um, I do not think. Uh, Dominic should be on his own yet. I still feel like he's a little bit too green in the ring, in my personal opinion, for them to go the father versus son storyline. Do I think it could work with a little bit more time? Possibly, but we'll see. We'll see. I, you know, I don't want to rule it out, but, you know, I think that is the ultimate goal for them is to have the father versus son storyline at some point in the future. Is a WrestleMania already has 14 matches, not Jesus to mention SmackDown Christ. hosting the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal and IC Championship match. So does the WWE need any more matches? No. Not really, unless it feels the need to run a match on each night of the pre-show. However, looking at the WWE roster, the promotion will have to look high and low for anyone who isn't already competing at Mania. Don't count on any extra matches at this year's WrestleMania as no, the majority of WWE stars are booked and the remaining stars are mid-card acts at best. And lastly, any big changes ahead? And while WrestleMania no longer seems to be the place where scores are settled for good and WWE has found it too lucrative to stretch things out with its WrestleMania Backlash show, fans could see some major changes to the WWE following the title unification bout between Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. Regardless of who you want or think will win, the WWE is going to have to deal with having one world champion for two brands. Mm -hmm. While the WWE has an undisputed world championship before, bringing it back has fans asking what this means for the brand split. Yeah. Will the WWE allow the champion to appear on both shows if the brand split continues, or will it put the brand split on hold again? Judging from WrestleMania Raw, the WWE is already looking at how things could work out with wrestlers from Raw and SmackDown appearing on one show. But there you have it guys, the most shocking rumors you need to know about WrestleMania 38. Be sure to leave your comments down. Yeah.
I mean, honestly, if you're going to unify the titles, you would need to end the brand split. But once again, I don't think they're going to end the brand split, obviously, because, well, these networks want them to be split. Fox want, has SmackDown. USA has Monday Night Raw. They want these these to be separate. They, they want different ratings. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know how they're going to do this because... Uh, Having one champion float between two shows is, is kind of difficult. I don't know how they're going to do this. We will see if they actually go through with with actually ending the brand split here. We will see. Comment down below and let me know. Do you guys think they should end the brand split if they're going to unify the, uh, the titles, man? But honestly, man, this year's WrestleMania, uh, it's, it's, it's one of those scenes where it's like... Um, I'm not as excited, once again, as I should be. There are matches that I'm looking forward to, but a lot of these matches I am not looking forward to. I'm just being honest. So, I'm, I'm just kind of like, I'm, I'm trying to get myself excited about it for what, you know, what WrestleMania does have to offer this year. And I want to get your opinion. Are you guys excited about this year's WrestleMania? Or are you guys feeling like me, where it's like, there's a lot of filler matches I don't really care to see or I'm not that interested in. There's only a handful of things I actually want to see on this show. Or are you just completely over WWE's booking of WrestleMania this year and you legitimately don't care about nothing on the show? Let me know down below, but I appreciate all love and support. Road 2, 80K, appreciate y'all keeping with me. See y'all next one. Peace.